is a very powerful tool. It can help us solve a number of problems that we have with building and deploying. A lot of the teams at Riot are very sort of self-contained and sort of drive their own destiny and choose their own technology. They're fairly independent, so we have a lot of, we spend a lot of effort to try to come up with best practices and shared resources. Um, we have a number of teams using public um, web services and APIs. There's a lot of advantages to that, but not every project at Riot can use those. We also are pretty good at running our own data center, provisioning metal. We're exploring different technologies to abstract that. So we've run Eucalyptus for a lot of our load testing. Um, we're investigating OpenStack. We do a lot of VMware stuff for internal things. So we have a lot of different kinds of IS um, solutions that we have to choose from. And they fit, they solve different problems. Um, they're useful in different cir circumstances. And not everybody has come up with like a one-size-fits-all solution to that. And what we often end up doing is we get a machine and it's all set up with a particular OS. We've standardized on that to some degree. And then it comes time to do a deployment. And what it looks like is this. So you have, you know, we use Chef, primarily different tools built on top of Chef. But what you're doing is bringing down cookbooks and bringing down artifacts and trying to replicate a desired state onto a machine that you hope is in a state that started where you thought it started, right? Um, and it works most of the time, but not all of the time. I mean, in every single deployment, something goes wrong. Um, there's always something weird, and trying to trying to manage that over time is difficult. So I, I worked, before I came here, I was at Netflix. I managed the tools team there, and the way we did deployments is effectively with golden images. We had the advantage there of running on AWS. We only had one kind of image to worry about. It was an Ami. So we built Amis for everything. So every app was put onto an Ami, was baked onto a base, we could deploy that. So once you've tested that particular image, you could then deploy thousands of instances and you knew they were all going to come up exactly the same perfectly every time. Um, there's a few problems with that in, in this world that we're talking about with a heterogeneous infrastructure system. Um, one of them, we would like to be able to deploy smaller apps um, and what you end up with in, in this case is a very large container, which is an entire machine, to deploy something that might be a very small app. So you're really not using your resources very well. You also have these large containers that are hard to ship around. So in Amazon, we could do baking of the images in the two or three regions, you know, on Netflix, where we worried about things. So Virginia, um, Ireland, uh, Portland. We had bakeries baking in those regions that we could deploy. So that was that was kind of how we dealt with the problem there. Um, at Riot, we have dozens and dozens of data centers all around the world. Um, and if we were to try to do a continuous delivery where we created images here and then try to ship them all over the place, it's just you know, 10 gigabyte machine images a lot to move around. Especially if you're creating baking in a continuous fashion. You want to move fast, you want to be able to, to create a new application version and maybe something's popping out of the pipeline every few minutes. So that's just a huge amount of network traffic that's really not binding very much. So Docker solves this problem for us, and we're, we're figuring out how to migrate to it. And for us, and I should have drawn this picture, um, it helps us decouple how we build these application appliances and how we deploy them. So it, it lets you create a container that's smaller than an entire machine. That's really the size of an app, and it could be really, really small. It could be that you've got a little C++ app, or a Go app, or some kind of little Python script. It's a framework that runs, and this may only be a few megabytes. And it could be that small, or it could be an entire setup of JVM and multiple caches all wrapped up into a container. Really, it could be whatever scale you want it to be. And, and it's typically going to be way smaller than an entire machine disk. Um, with Docker, you can use many different tools to create that image. Um, you can use Docker, Docker files themselves, you can use Packer, you can write your own scripts, you can use Chef Solo to put things into the container or whatever, you know, whatever kind of tooling you like. And the teams you know, can fit that around the workflow, create the Docker container. And then we can deploy the containers. Now at this point we're playing around with it and I've got clusters set up that are just machines that are auto scale, they're running Docker. And then we kind of manually poke the containers onto the machines. But that seems like there's a big piece missing. So we're investigating a number of technologies. Like how do we manage this sort of cluster or grid of 
post for our doctor and um, So one thing that we've looked at, oh, that's, that's just a slide, we got ahead of the slide. Um, we've abstracted this sort of multi-layer system. And I, some of these are clipped out of my white paper that I have internally. So they're a little bit out of context. But if you think about this layer two, which is the cluster layer, the grid layer, it's something above the infrastructure as a service, but below what the application developers want to think of. But it provides a nice layer of abstraction so that you can think of you know, deploying your Docker containers on a grid of hosts. The grid could be running on Amazon, which could be auto scale. It could be running on your own metal. It could be running on VMware. It, it doesn't really matter. And the, depending on where you're deploying it and what the ops guys want to set up, it works for them for that particular environment or use case. They can set it up that way and you sort of just normalize everything with some kind of grid management software. Um, so we're looking at a couple. One of them is Fleet from CoreOS. It's very interesting, it's very Docker oriented, it's very simple, and their OS is very, very lean and neat. But that's, there's some very nice properties around that. Um, one of the trade-offs, though, even though it is very cleanly designed, um, it's still very, very young, and they haven't proven that it's very scalable yet. In fact, and they're still just now figuring out how to get their master slave for application to scale out. Um, and they're uh, adopting, you know, adapting the architecture over time. It's very easy to play with. So this is probably like the first thing to start with. You can fire up a cluster in a few minutes on AWS running, running CoreOS and play with Docker on it and hook things onto it and make it work really quickly. But I think for production, Mesos provides a more solid alternative. So we're looking at this the same thing. So Mesos with Marathon gives us a potential to distribute our Docker containers across the grid and manage them. It also has the advantage of solving other problems too. So we have the big data teams are also very excited about it. So that if we have a grid, um, so Mesos manages and managing the entire grid of computers, we can um, then share that between the different kinds of workloads. The Docker containers that are you know, doing long running services, SOA architecture, or MapReduce jobs running, or other kinds of real-time analytics. So all these different frameworks can then be built on top of the Mesos platform. And this is kind of a little picture of our layer. So layer one being the infrastructure layer, layer two being sort of the abstraction of the cluster, and layer three being how we do our paths and our workflow and recommended way for our teams to build and deploy. That's where we'll do our deployment automation. It's a lot easier to write a deployment tool when you're building on top of a grid or a cluster or a system that's really smart. So like the state of what you want to run, how to describe something is really nicely abstract and comparable. You can say, here's you know, my Docker container. I want you to run this on 25 instances. It needs two CPU units and you know, half a gig of RAM go. And that's, that's very easy to deploy if the system below you is doing all over. That's basically like right now, we're just in the process of evaluating it. Um, I'm really eager to play with uh, the 0.19 release, which should be coming out in the next couple of days. That's finally where they, they're, they're converging all of the major components. So Mesos, um, Docker integration, containerization, and your hunt, which all come together and make a very nice solution. Okay. Any questions? Oh, yeah. So how does Docker become like jail resources? So let's say that we have a bunch of containers that have, have a pile down operation so that's all kind of converging at once, right? How does it actually contain that particular behavior? Because it's different from like a, a virtualized situation where you actually have them separated into separate OS and you describe the kind of it's actually handling them all being inside the same kernel. Yeah, so so Docker and, and Mesos do this in a similar way. So both of them use use secrets and the containerization mechanisms on the host. Um, I'm not sure if all the resources are able to constrain, um, but, but typically you can do memory and CPU allocation constraints so that the container is, is part of the kernel of, of Linux that can manage um, the resource allocations available to, to processes in the C group. Um, I'm not sure about network. That may be an area that's still um, to be done in the future for network um, bandwidth allocations. Um, but definitely memory and CPU utilization Quoted, quota, quotified, I can say that, yeah, managed um, on a per container basis. Have you done any work 
which uh, basically analyze um, which machines are running into their portals and then move those around? Or, I mean, is that still kind of relevant? That would be something, I think, at the uh, marathon level. I'm not sure. The movement of, of, uh, of uh, tasks around, is that something that marathon can do? Shuffling things to make room, or? Is that something that's built in right now? But uh, say you were, one, one nice thing that Mesos gives you is that you can actually hit a bunch of rest endpoints. You, so you can hit a rest endpoint on each node, and it'll tell you the, like, the reserved Amount of resources, but it'll also tell you the amount that's actually being used by the some of the tasks. And so you could uh, you could query that, aggregate it, and then use that to you know say like uh, kill this task because it's on an overloaded box and start up some else. Yeah, I guess that's kind of another way of doing. It's like garbage collection, right? So you're, you're trying to do a compaction of, of your tasks if you want to make room. Somebody asked that question earlier today, like if you wanted to send power in the data center, it would be very handy to provide a tool that could scan all of the task allocations across all your machines, find holes where you've got space, move stuff over. And in this case, be, you could just shut a slave off and kill the processes. Marathon would bring up those tasks back again onto other machines. And then once the machine had been drained, you could shut it off and take power. But there's also like, no train as a post pass period in this house is coming up. Okay. Any questions? Okay, yeah. Um, is Docker or uh, does it come to for that matter going to be used in your new Amsterdam website? Um, <laughs> yeah, this is still kind of long range stuff. Uh -huh. So not not on the, during, on the get go. Also, oh, that's something that's being local. Yeah, we're, we're doing experiments now, we're building up a lot of infrastructural tools on so how we do service discovery, how we do um, system control, we're basically sort of evolving our back end into a more of a PaaS, sorry, it's not more of a service oriented architecture to the actor, to the actor, the SOA, um, by making everything small microservices. So most of our back end is Java, so we're doing a lot of work building up Java frameworks so that we can do RESTful SOAs in the back end and have standardized endpoints so that we can manage them and control them and do service discovery. And then put those into Docker containers just as a perfect fit. And being able to run them anywhere and move them around and they're stateless, it's just simple to just start shoving things around and scaling up and scaling down. It's just kind of a perfect perfect convergence of technology when all these things are coming together. I think Mesos can provide the management of the grid and the allocation of the resources. Docker is a nice way to package up stuff and ship it around. Um, and then you build SOAs on that and make them, and make them stateless. And it's, it's a big one. Okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>